Hello and welcome. I have friends interested in RC kits, but they're held back. I think one of the biggest hurdles is to figure out the electronic system. I'm building a Tamiya BBX from scratch, and I've reached a point where I need to install the electronics. I'd like to go over each component, explain what they do, and how they're hooked up. We'll take a closer look at the servo and receiver in this episode. The receiver has AVC, and we'll see if it's any good. If you're new to this hobby, I think this video will help. Let's get right into it. Just like driving a real car, the driver controls precisely how much power is delivered. Instead of using the right foot on the gas pedal, the RC driver uses the left index finger to move the trigger on the transmitter. There's also a tiny steering wheel to steer the front wheel. The transmitter sends the driver's input to a receiver by way of radio transmission. The receiver sends the steering data electrically to the servo, which moves the thingy attached to it called servo saver. The receiver also sends the throttle data to the electronic speed controller or ESC which controls the rotational speed of the motor's output. The battery connects to the ESC which distributes the power to the whole system. The three-wire cable usually has a brown or black wire that means ground. Align that to the minus sign on the receiver. Connect the servo cable to where it says STR. Connect the ESC cable to where it says THR. Before the transmitter can talk to the receiver, a radio link must be established. This is called binding. This only has to be done once and the procedure should be clearly documented in the transmitter's user manual. Connect the steering link to the servo saver using a pair of long nose pliers. The servo saver pushes the steering link in normal situations. In the event of crashing, the impact on the front wheel ends up bending a spring inside the servo saver such that the impact doesn't destroy your precious servo. The ability of the servo to keep up with the steering input is called the servo speed and is specified as seconds per 60 degrees. Here I have a servo that can move 60 degrees within 0.08 seconds. The ability of the servo to move large loads is specified as torque. Faster servos tend to have lower torque and high torque servos tend to be slower. There are high performance servos having both high torque and high speed but they are generally more costly. We've already fastened the servo into the chassis. Now let's throw in the ESC and the receiver. The ESC is attached by double sided tape and the receiver is mounted behind the driver's seat. When cornering, if the rear wheel loses traction and slides out, the driver makes a correction by steering the other way. This prevents spinning out of control. An RC vehicle works exactly the same way. Some receivers are equipped with sensors that can detect a spin. It can help correct the spin by steering the opposite way. It also cuts throttle as demonstrated here. This is different from traction control in a real car when it cuts throttle when traction is lost. This kind of stability control may be called AVC or some other names. The steering and throttle control can be adjusted separately in the setting menu. They can be switched off by setting to 0%. Priority refers to the driver's priority over AVC when the steering input is at full left or right. At 100% this means there's no steering AVC control at full left or right. It sounds promising, but is it really helpful? Let's find out. To make it more interesting, I'm putting on wheels from another model which have hard rubber so it is more slippery. The condition on my Pebble Concrete Patio is slightly moist today. Now let's drive with AVC on. The thing with driving a car this small is that when it starts to spin, it does it in a split second. Before you know it, it's already unrecoverable. This is especially true for rear-wheel drive cars like the BBX. You almost have to develop a reflex such that you can anticipate a spin before it actually happens. This is true even with the ABC on. Next, let's turn off the throttle control function of the AVC and see what happens. With the traction control turned off, I have more control on spinning. I could tap the throttle in the middle of a turn and the rear will start to skid. More control doesn't necessarily mean better driving, as shown in the footage. I have to drive really carefully. Sometimes that can be tiresome, but also rewarding. This time, the AVC is completely turned off. 
With the rear slippery like this and without steering corrections, it's hard to drive straight and I really have to slow down to drive straight. It's quickly getting to a point of frustration. One last thing to try is to change back the BBX tires. AVC is still off so we can get a feel for the stock BBX performance. With the BBX stock tires, the buggy is well behaved and predictable. Almost no spin out. Although the driving is less dramatic, I could still spin the rear if I want by tapping the throttle. It is so fun and I find myself driving it non-stop. If you find yourself wanting to keep driving, good for you, that's the way to go. The ABC alone is not a magic bullet to get you there. It is good at helping you drive straight especially if you have a brushless motor that is very powerful. In the next episode, I will go over the battery, the ESC and the motor and that's a whole lot of stuff to talk about. The Tamiya BBX build is far from being done and I plan to finish it and make it look real nice in future episodes. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Cheers and see you next time.